Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome here in the Victor Klemper Saal. Dear Dr. Julia Meyer, dear team of the Dresden Film Fest, as a representative of Schaufler Lab at TU Dresden, I'm pleased to welcome um, also members of the board, Ingo Smith and Barbara Bergmann from the Schaufler Foundation, and of course, dear Anton Ginsberg, welcome uh, in this Klemperer uh, Saal uh, of the Saxon State University and Library. Um, we thank you for coming uh, today. And be, on behalf of the lab, I would also like to welcome all listeners and viewers who are out there from near and far listening to our stream, to our live stream, uh, viewing the films and listening to the talk between uh, Anton Ginsberg and Kramer before the screenings will start. The Schaffler Lab at TU Dresden has been around for a good year now. It's built on two lakes. One of them, the Schaffler Collegue, with currently nine fellows from the humanities and social sciences and a couple of associated ones. Welcome to you, uh, too. A couple of you are here tonight. Um, this is the one leg. The other leg is the artist residency. And I also welcome Christian Cosmas Meyer, um, the other um, artist who so far has been a visiting artist to uh, the Schaffler residency. Um, we have set ourselves the goal um, of establishing the topic of artificial intelligence during this first phase of the Schaffler Lab at TU Dresden um, from a perspective which combines um, uh, humanities and social sciences and also the perspective of um, the arts, which is a quite unique thing to do. Um, and. Uh, we have collaboration partners from um, the sciences at TU Dresden, foremost SETI, the Center for Tactile um, Internet, um, an excellence uh, cluster, and the SCADS AI Center, um, which is connected to the Center for um, Information Services and High Performance Computing at TU Dresden. So these are our partners who are really the ones who do um, AI from a technical uh, sense. And we look at it, as I said, from a transdisciplinary um, perspective, which is somehow inscribed into the genes um, of our uh, lab by the interaction not only between different disciplines, but also between sciences, uh, humanities, and the arts. So transdisciplinary, big issue, and also be one of the um, points that the talk today will center on. Anton Ginsburg um, is um, a New York artist who will uh, pay his visit to the residency from January to August 21. Um, and he's the fellow, the second, excuse me, the second fellow recipient in the Schaffler Lab at Theo Dresden's Artist in Residence program. He follows. Um, Christian Cosmas Meyer, who works and lives in Vienna and who held the residency um, before, but due to pandemic um, um, issues, both are here um, simultaneously, which is also um, a fine uh, thing. Yeah, together with early career researchers um, at the Collegue, um, these artists and uh, some more to follow um, will exchange uh, with various university faculties in the case of um, Ginsberg, um, he explores the lab's first main research topic, artificial intelligence, AI, as a factor and as a consequence of societal and cultural um, change. He was born in 1974 in St. Petersburg, Russia, and now is a New York-based artist who received his Master of Fine Arts from Bard College, Annandale at Hudson, uh, state of New York. His work has been shown uh, in uh, manifold um, and renowned exhibitions like the 54th Venice Biennale, the Bluffer Art Museum at the University of Houston, Palais de Tokyo in Paris, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, 
and at the first and second Moscow Biennales. His films, Anton Ginsburg's films, have been screened at the Whitechapel Gallery in London, at the Rotterdam International Film Festival, at the Les Recontes Internationales in Paris, and at the Haus der Kulturen uh, der Welt in Berlin, and also, and finally, at the New York Film Festival. He has a, an art that encompasses, or he produces art that encompasses a wide range of different uh, media, video, installation, sculpture, painting, um, and printmaking. So it's not only about uh, films that we are going to see today, but these films touch upon the issue of multi-mediality um, um, and upon yeah, the medium as a message, as you might, might uh, call it, uh, from uh, um, communicative perspective. The focus of his project at TU Dresden is an investigation of concepts of creativity and cultural labor in a historical context, taking early modern methods of artistic practice and the legacy of the 20th century modernistic artistic vocabulary as a starting point. He reflects on current strategies of the technological mechanization of work, such as machine learning, and their influence on contemporary artistic practices. Here at Theo Dresden, he collaborates closely with uh, Stefan Gumholt, Professor Stefan Gumholt, Chair of Computer Graphics and Visualization at the Faculty of Computer Science, as well as with the Chair of Computing of Professor Axel Vogt at the Faculty of Mathematics. Ginsburg is pursuing ideas on algorithmical visual visualizations by film and audio and video recording. And uh, in doing so, um, uh, he also cooperates with junior professor Matthew McGinnity, or Ginnity, I'm not sure, um, who is also um, uh, uh, at the TU Dresden uh, at the Immersive Experience um, Lab. The algorithmically calculated visualizations are based on patterns and structures and Ginsburg identified in the two, which Ginsburg identified in the two collections at TU Dresden. One of them, mathematical models, which contains different physical or um, bodily manifestations of mathematical functions um, or geometrical um, bodies, and a famous um, collection of colors, the color research um, collection, which also um, is uh, stored at, uh, and uh, curated um, at the TU Dresden. At the tam same time, um, in his projects here, he is intensively involved with site-specific art in the GDR, especially um, concerning the so-called Formstein system, preformed building block system, which was developed by Karl-Heinz Adler and Friedrich Krach to Dresden. Um, uh, artists um, who developed the system in the late 1960s and became famous um, with it. And based on these ideas and concept, visual transformations are to be created in virtual space. Now we are glad to start soon with the conversation. It's about approaches to art and AI. And in this conversation, Anton Ginsburg will describe which theses and concepts are relevant to his engagement with technology and automatization and AI as one of its forms. He will talk to Gwendolyn Kramer about uh, his research, who is the curator responsible for the Schaufler residency at TU Dresden and accompanies the processual art research of our artists in the residence. In addition, she looks after the art collection as a research assistant for the Custody um, and is the curatorial head of the University Gallery in Gergesbau. So, enjoy. I wish you an exciting event and thank you very much for your attention.
thank you very much, Professor Lutzhagen, um, for your warm greeting words. Um, I'm happy um, to have you here, Anton. Finally, as you heard um, in the welcome words, um, Anton Ginsburg um, started his residency in January, but of course, um, due to Corona pandemic um, limitations, um, we started online. I'm really happy um, to welcome as well um, two of his um, collaborators, um, partners at Technical University, um, Professor Axel Vogt and also Professor Matthew McGinnity, um, who are joining um, our artist talk um, tonight. Thank you for coming. And thank you for coming to everybody here, um, especially our colleagues um, from the Schaufler Kolleg and the Schaufler Lab. And the Film Fest Dresden, of course, because this is um, the main reason we are here tonight. Um, and we use this um, occasion, of course, um, to introduce you with your artistic approach um, to a broader audience and give them an insight about your wide-ranged um, artistic works, um, which also include um, these um, specifications with AI and automation. Yeah. Thank you, Gwendolyn. <laughs> Um, I would like to start with a quite general question and ask you what interests you about working with scientists? Mm. Um, well, f for me, um, kind of the trajectory of my artistic research and art practice is really uh, rooted in the modernist tradition. Um, and um, the uh, technological aspect or scientific aspect was always kind of like a focus of that. And you can see it in the Enlightenment period, you can see it in the 20th century. Um, I'll be um, kind of clicking through my presentation uh, to show some examples. So um, um, when I kind of encountered this opportunity to work with Theo Dresden, it's really kind of aligned with my uh, kind of area of research and it, um, offered new opportunities um, kind of when I the AI was a new topic for me I was very interested in that but I never really had a chance to uh, work with it uh, directly um, and um, um, that's what I'm able to do through the residency and to really combine and to understand through tacit knowledge through hands-on knowledge uh, how to work with algorithms by collaborating with um, uh, professor um, Alex Voigt and um, uh, Stefan Gumhold, and um, um, so this way it becomes kind of the experimentation where the task is not specified, but uh, the medium becomes more familiar. Um, yeah. What, what, is, what is artistic research for you? Mm. If you should describe it in a few words, um, just to give an, an idea um, about your process and um, your approach. Uh, well, it's actually a conversation we had with Christian yesterday about uh, <laughs> what is the nature of artistic uh, research? Is there such a thing as a, um, artistic research? Or is it a kind of a creative research for the artistic project? What becomes the um, kind of the final outcome? So, uh, I think for me, uh, it's really a preparation and you can um, uh, kind of collect a certain uh, kind of amount of data about uh, history of the project that you're working in, about uh, materials, methods. So in a way it becomes a conceptual uh, platform. And um, um, it's actually a class that I also teach in uh, Pratt and MFA is a kind of methods of creative research. For me, it also becomes a, a kind of like a synthetic approach where uh, you're not just focused, let's say, on the artistic outcome, but um, you go deeper into the social context, into the historical uh, context. Um, in a way, I think it's parallel to machine learning where you create kind of like a data set of the information kind of for yourself from which leads you to certain uh, to certain answers so instead of forcing um, kind of a formal outcome the creative research helps you to with an editing process uh, and with a formal outcome so it becomes a um, it becomes an experiment which i believe that uh, kind of art making is in a way it's um, uh, it's a process of accumulation of knowledge that comes through uh, practical means. 
and of course it's a process of exchange exchange Absolutely. of ideas knowledge um but also methods. Um. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much for adding it. And um, for me, of course, um, uh, collaboration, collaborative approach with um, colleagues, uh, with people from different fields, from viewer, is a necessary part. Otherwise, uh, art stays very decorative. So that becomes a very kind of social function, an educational function of the uh, art making. Thank you, Anton. Um, as we heard in the introduction, art historical and cultural references um, play a major role um, in your work. And you make these references um, again and again, as we will see um, in your presentation um, as well. And there's a recourse to architecture, um, to traditions from the, from the early 20th century as the avant-garde um, in Russia, but also um, probably in Italy, um, if you look at the futurism um, movement, um, for example. Um, yeah, what, interest, what, what interests you um, actually about this recourse um, from today's perspective? Um, well, I believe that kind of the certain universal, universal possibility of a universality that of course was a big topic for the 20th century um, is a big inspiration. Um, the way, what role um, art um, kind of took in the 20th century, let's say, in the Soviet Union, in the beginning, I would say 10 and 20, not really later, um, uh, was really um, a possibility of the artist uh, as a professional to participate in the social change. And uh, kind of the examples of uh, so-called production arts or productivist uh, art approach was exactly an ability to um, inform the artist about uh, economics, about uh, social necessities, about um, kind of synth synthesis of the arts. Um, and um, what really caught my attention was the um, some of the uh, architectural practices in GDR. And uh, as kind of in the beginning of my residency, we were talking, you pointed out a group of, I, I, was, I was aware of it, but I wasn't familiar kind of about the kind of this uh, sp specific artist. So I'm actually gonna click to it. So it's um, uh, kind of very characteristic uh, kind of art from 50s and 60s. Um, uh, of uh, Friedrich Kracht, uh, this particular uh, fountain, and uh, also Karl, Karl Heinz uh, Adler. Uh, for me, it was very kind of, it was really a discovery because uh, there was a similar uh, phenomenon in Soviet Union in the 60s where uh, artists really collaborated with uh, scientists, with um, cybernetic arts, um, and um, it was a ch an opportunity for a certain... Um, uh, freedom of creative freedom, which wasn't under the, um, uh, let's say, ideological canon that existed. Uh, and it created very interesting um, opportunities. So I kind of started, um, so this is an example of some of the modular systems that um, kind of I was researching and uh, I was able to visit on site. <laughs> the so-called Formstein system. Formstein, um. yes. And um, I wanted to show some of um, my exhibition actually from six years ago, where I was exploring very similar modular uh, methods, uh, unaware kind of like of the uh, of this artist. So um, I was really fascinated with the depth of the research and the entire distribution system that it created uh, and the language of that. And um, um, so I decided that um, I would like to create um, um, historical research that would be kind of a foundation for um, kind of for my uh, research uh, with AI. And after participating in some workshops and talking with colleagues, um, I was thinking that the aspect of AI that first kind of like that is interesting for me is really a next level of optimization of the creative labor uh, and um, kind of a calibration. So rather than thinking about it as a um, kind of uh, as a future savior or a threat that exists, I was interested to look at it more as a form of a tool, a machine that helps to, uh, helps kind of uh, an artist, a designer, an architect uh, to, and to work with um, kind of with a medium. Um, 
Um, if you if you talk about this reference um, to technology, but also to traditions um, in art and architecture. Um, I always thought when we were talking the last um, months um, that it's also a great interest in disruption um, of society, but also of forms and um, ideas of composition, concepts of composition. Um, yeah, maybe you can um, explain this a little bit more. Um, yes. Um, uh, working also with... Um, um, computers with the programming language. I mean, it's fascinating with its p possibilities, but for me, kind of as a kind of like an art maker, it was also important to bring the kind of the hand back into it. So I decided to do kind of like a daily routines, kind of like a daily exercise. Uh, well, we can come back to that. Um, so, um, well, probably I should mention um, there is a really fantastic color archive that exists in the um, in the town of Dresden, as well as uh, the archive of mathematical models. So, I think the tradition of um, synthesis of technology and art kind of exists here, uh, but of course it kind of dates back. There is uh, fascinating volumes of Goethe with his um, kind of. Uh, uh, research on color, uh, as well as kind of all these different machines, which kind of kept enriching my research and kind of creating new ideas and kept kept it as an experiment. So, in order to just kind of do my morning gymnastics, like I produce uh, a gouache a day, uh, based also on the algorithmic compositions, based on the kind of code that directs the composition, facilitates. Uh, on one hand the process, but at the same time helps me to keep my hand active, so not to be totally disconnected from the materiality of the um, of the project. And we're going to have an exhibition, I think it's going to be about uh, 50 works uh, in the Color Archive in the end of August, uh, which is a result of actually kind of reading through the books, talking with uh, uh, Professor Ralph Weber, um, and collaborating with um, Gwendolyn and uh, Andres, who will help to install the exhibition. <laughs> I hope everybody can uh, can come. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess um, if you're talking about cultural practices and cultural work, um, which um, is one goal, um, uh, one goal to um, see it finally um, in your crafts, um, your works, um, your process. Um, also, our collections are quite important. Um, you talked about the collection um, of color theory, but also um, about the dye collection. And here we see an image um, with models um, from the mathematical collection um, here at Technical University Dresden. Um, if we look at these objects, of, if we look at these object cultures, um, these cultures also um, help us, in my understanding, um, to get a better idea um, of history, also about, um, yeah, <clears throat> development in technology, of course. Um, how does it um, fit um, to your um, approach with AI? Um, well, this is a, a um, very early uh, mathematical model, so I would yeah. imagine it's probably f some 30s, some 50s. 30s uh, and 50s from 50s. the last century, yes. So the next level is actually that we're developing with uh, Professor Axel Voigt, and uh, we had a meeting actually today. Uh, so working on computers, of course, the computers permit like a whole different uh, level of algorithmic research and the discovery. So, but still, the decision making and the dialogue that that is created, which takes a while to develop, that ultimately becomes the kind of. Um, what edits the form. So, so, so form so this, and composition um, is the basis for your um, developments now? Well, the formal approach, yeah. the formal exploration is definitely uh, something that I'm interested mm -hmm. in and something that uh, new technologies is, are capable of exploring, but the process of editing and decision making, how, um, how the project will develop and what forms it takes, it's still very much based on uh, human interaction. And um, so we have um, weekly meetings uh, with two students and uh, with Professor uh, Axel Voigt, and it's, 
it's really interesting also to see how the kind of the dialogue changes and how the understanding between different mediums uh, changes. So um, I think the um, the fact that uh, Shuffle Lab uh, permits it kind of to basically take this time for without a specific task, I think is a very enriching experience. And through that, I think you can really find a discovery. And I hope it's also helpful for the, um, for the mathematics students, um, maybe difficult sometimes, <laughs> but it's, um, uh, but I find it very, very rewarding. So, because I think the task that maybe I'm setting is maybe unusual for kind of a rational thinking. Mm -hmm. Not that my projects are rational, but. <laughs> and what is your, what is your project about? Um, maybe just give us a glimpse. Well, it's, um, it's kind of about form making. Like um, I was looking at the synthesis of art and architecture and the role of the you know, public art. Uh, something that I do in my practice in New York, I collaborate with architects uh, quite a bit. So uh, the question of form is, of course, very much important. So besides generating the form, of course, the conceptual aspect of that. So I was interested to create um, a, a machine, kind of an interface that um, that will generate the form based on the new technology. So something that we're developing right now is two forms. Um, uh, based on mathematical knots, and uh, Axel, please correct me if, I, <laughs> if I'm uh, uh, saying it wrong. Um, but um, uh, we're introducing um, text uh, into the um, into the interface, and um, uh, the algorithm is able to interpret the kind of sentiments, uh, the emotional charge of the text, and based on that generate the form, um, or affect rather the form. Um, so in the end it becomes kind of like a abstraction that's based on kind of very concrete factors. And I think it's something that wouldn't be possible uh, before kind of without this kind of technology. Um, so in a way kind of, but also kind of mechanizing it, creating the interface, creating the machine that creates the form, I think that's something that's one of the tasks that I set for this exploration. And how is this um, topic linked um, to your interest in um, GDR art and architecture, especially also site-specific art, um, as we heard um, from Lutz Hagen and also from you now? Um, maybe um, you can yeah, also talk about um, these um, compositions and forms and maybe also about material um, and these modular um, strategies um, both artists mm -hmm. invented. Um, where, do you, where do you see um, yeah, a reference um, to your own work and um, which forms um, can we expect? Um, um, well, from the st kind of strategic point of view, um, what I was interested in is the collaboration of artists and architect. Uh, happening at the conceptual level, which is not that usual, let's say, for the Western system. Um, so, for example, I was talking with a, uh, Professor Lippert uh, of uh, architectural history. So the strategies, like, for example, 1% for art that exists in New York, where 1% of the development budget goes towards um, artistic, uh, artistic projects, was actually implemented. Was actually, as he says, was 2% that was developed for, um, for generating artwork, um, which I thought was kind of like an interesting approach. Um, so I would compare kind of the approach of uh, Adler and uh, Kracht to experiments that were happening in the 60s of Sol Lewitt, for example, like a lot of very modular approaches. Uh, but the nature of it where one was kind of much more conceptual and... Um, um, kind of I think the kind of the experience of the G GDR was much more kind of rooted in the materiality and the uh, kind of production arts and actually building like having this outcome um, for me it was kind of interesting um, kind of for my own project I'm not sure yet what form it will mm. take um, I would like to use um, the time that I'm at Schauffler lab to 
uh, basically try different strategy to develop a vocabulary, to develop a, um, a grammar, a formal grammar, uh, and see kind of like what, uh, how it can develop later on. But I think the publication would be a very important document of this experience. And uh, uh, I think that will be kind of like one of the main focuses in the next months <laughs> uh, to work on. And if you are talking about this grammar, this vocabulary um, you discovered um, within the Formstein system um, by Karl-Heinz Adler and Friedrich Kracht, um, what kind of um, technologies, algorithms um, can be used or what kind of forms um, could this um, intervention um, mm -hmm. yeah, make visible um, finally? Um, what's your goal? Um, if, if you're knowing here in Dresden or in East um, Germany, of course, um, there's a big renaissance of East modernism. Um, we have a lot of um, exhibitions and also here at Technical University, um, mm -hmm. we draw our attention um, to these um, traditions, to these artists who worked for us um, in the 60s and 70s. Um, but never as an as artists um, because um, they were only um, commissioned for site specific um, more decorative works um, what m makes this um, historical um, impact on our vision or on our um, view and perspective of these artists today um, well, I think it's looking at art historical context. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, I think the realization of it within the um, kind of urban context, um, I think is an achievement that could be rethought, you know, um, so not necessarily participating in the market system of the artworks makes it viable, you know, so I think, uh, revisiting it and um, uh, giving more um, kind of spotlight, I think, to these practices, um, I think is, in a, and I think the interest uh, kind of that you're describing is uh, well-deserved. I think it's something that should definitely be as part of the 20th century art. Um, for me, it is kind of, um, it's, it's an inspiration that I'm hoping to kind of um, maybe uh, be inspired by the experience to develop, let's say, my my own vocabulary. So uh, something coming back actually to the artistic research and back to the conversation with Christian. Sorry, Christian, I'm going to bring it up. Was um, something that we're discussing, which I thought was actually very valid, is about um, uh, artistic research that it doesn't necessarily have to be a verbal context. And I think the experience that I'm kind of having here is the ability to work with not necessarily visual forms, but also think about it in other scientific uh, terms, which are very new for me, uh, like for formula, algorithm, uh, distribution, what form does it take? So I think the technology um, offers um, kind of a new realities that you have to solve. And, um, Kind of in um, kind of in my opinion, what art practice is is a record of decisions that are made. So, um, so decision making ultimately, I think, is that what uh, defines a, uh, creative practice. Some decisions the artist makes themselves, uh, and some decisions are made for them. So, I think in the situation of the '60s of Adler and Crack, some decisions were made for them. So, in a way, we have to see it within this context. Yeah, and it's an interesting fact um, that both of them um, were working um, for Technical University in yeah. the 60s, um, were doing research here at the um, architecture department on material, um, but also on form studies or formal studies, um, working mm -hmm. also with um, earlier collections and um, object cultures. Um, that's funny. Um, yeah, correlation, um, and not only funny, but important, of course, so. um, if we look within um, the tradition of art history. Art history um, yeah, as we are running out of time, um, somehow, um, I wanted to ask a last question, um, because um, we are waiting to see your screening tonight um, at the Film Fest Dresden here in the main library of our university. Um, so, how is your um, current artistic work at Technical University um, also connected with your cinematic works um, that we will see um, 
in 15 minutes. Um, well, one of the projects which I wanted to describe that yes. I didn't have time to do, uh, and um, which was more focused with uh, Stefan Gumhold and um, Matthew McGinnity, uh, is, um, well, this is some of the experiments with AI that I was able to develop. And um, so this is a collection uh, of photos, which is a data set, which ultimately is used to um, kind of to teach for machine learning. And some of the kind of quick experiments that I did in order to see if the machine can generate uh, the language. And this were some of the, um, some of the results. Uh, you can kind of see the um, kind of a certain artifacts that um, an imperfection that is created by the machine. So that's something also I'm kind of observing right now. But uh, kind of the results is kind of unexpected. So one of the projects that I'm working on is kind of based on a um, uh, process of segmentation and uh, machine learning. So I took as an inspiration um, um, kind of like a 1960s performance um, by a uh, collective of architects in San Francisco uh, called Ant Farm, where the car was driving into the, um, uh, into the mountain of uh, TV sets. So uh, I was able to kind of, I was thinking how to expand it and to learn a bit more about the video process and the possibilities that AI can create. Uh, so I was working with um, two students, um, uh, uh, Conrad Rao and um, Dan, I forget the last name, sorry. Um, so where we kind of created um, uh, certain sections of Dresden uh, in 3D uh, using the LiDAR technology, so it's a 3D technology. Uh, and uh, we use the kind of machine learning to use the kind of like to utilize the video textures uh, uh, on the situations, on uh, different scenarios. So this is actually a very cinematic approach, which is kind of based into scenes, uh, into cameras, uh, camera views. But uh, for me, it's a very new approach to, to that, um, kind of uh, where everything is virtual, everything is controllable, but the outcome somehow will be um, um, video-like. Uh, I have no idea where it's going yet, <laughs> But that's kind of, I think, part of, uh, of an experiment. So um, probably I should kind of introduce uh, the next projects, um, which will be kind of screening tonight. One is a film called Turo. Uh, it's um, a four-part film that's based on uh, Soviet constructivism. So it's four um, iconic buildings. One is the Melnikov House, uh, which has this kind of very uh, kind of recognizable um, windows, um, uh, Narkom Finn building, which was the first uh, communal house uh, in Moscow, uh, video game with the third international uh, tower, and the uh, Zeal Auto Factory. So all of these buildings, I filmed them right before either renovation or destruction, so it also serves as a um, uh, kind of documentary uh, record. I find there's some parallel to uh, architecture that was uh, happening in GDR at the time. Um, I can recognize certain kind of patterns. So um, uh, each of the towers that is presented, so it's four, four chapters, um, has its own scenario. So it's really kind of a deconstruction of a tower, either through uh, its representation, either through kind of... Uh, sound or an actual documentation of a fire that happened in one of the towers during filming uh, by accident. Not, I didn't, it's not my fault. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe we ask the, maybe uh, the audience if there are any questions maybe or so comments. Um, from your partners, um, but also from the Schaufler colleague and um, everybody listening here and also via live stream. Any questions? Yeah, thanks for the, the talk and the interesting uh, slides. I'm wondering, 
you are coming from Russia. You are working now and have been partly educated in the U.S. Now you're here in in Germany. Um, what does this uh, do to your to your art, or is it isn't it uh, important anymore in a global in a globalized world? The, co the cultural context for what you do. Um. Thank you. Um, yes, yes. Um, of course, the cu cultural context is is very important, and I think the fact that like I was really waiting to come to Germany, because in a way, even though I was kind of the first part was done by uh, Zoom, uh, being here, kind of uh, seeing the environment, interacting with people, I'm still of the kind of generation before the internet. So for me, the site presence and the uh, kind of social context and exchange is very important. So it's, um, Europe is more familiar for me growing up in that. Um, but I also kind of see through the prism of, uh, let's say, kind of New York art scene. Uh, so I'm able to have some reading, of course, that kind of I received in um, being in the United States. Um, so. I'm not sure how to how to answer it, but I think it's it's kind of the information, kind of the cultural information that you carry, um, that of course informs uh, informs the work. So, uh, kind of coming back to work on this film, for example, it gave me also a certain distance to kind of a constructivist experience, where for the longest time in Moscow the buildings were ignored and people were not particularly interested in that. Um, kind of I kind of got interested in that that kind of like actually in my um, it was part of my um, MFA uh, thesis where kind of I started to notice certain patterns in my education color scheme and I kind of connected it actually to the uh, Futemas, which was a sister uh, school of uh, Bauhaus so I started to notice that certain kind of formal decisions come intuitively so as an exhibition in the um, uh, Southern Alberta Art Gallery Museum, uh, I basically put myself through the curriculum of Futimas based on kind of records and archives to get exactly that tacit knowledge and to really kind of put the education through me. Or maybe I liked being in the graduate school and just didn't want to let go. So. <laughs> Yeah, just a short question, Anton. Uh, you said that AI did not play any role in your art before coming to the Schaufler Lab. So what do you think, how will your art change through the involvement of AI? What do you think, what can you gain from using it? And are there also some problematic sides to using it from your point of view? Um, well, it's it's definitely kind of, I understand it much better what it is. I think there's a certain mystery and kind of like seduction uh, since AI topic has been very hot, you know. So by actually working with it, you start to understand kind of the limitation of what it really stands for. Um, I think there is a certain uh, easiness that kind of some things can be achieved. And since it's really kind of, I think, kind of at the beginning of the kind of introducing AI into the art, um, I think some of these techniques will be used up and will become kind of very recognizable. Um, I'm interested in kind of creating this kind of synthesis between the technology and the hand. I still think that kind of hand and a certain unpredictability that human mind produces, I think that's where the kind of this interesting seam happens. Um, so I think the role of the artist really comes closer to kind of editing and decision making and maybe creating kind of impossible scenarios that uh, otherwise would not necessarily um, uh, technology can develop. Like a project, for example, that we were working with text was GPT-3. The problem with it that even if formally it was uh, something that really looked sophisticated and smart and kind of really kind of used the rich vocabulary, the actual messaging was empty. It was kind of an empty shell. So I think the kind of the structure, the skeleton of the messaging and of the intent really comes kind of 
to the artist and that uh, the strategies should really that becomes the task of the artist a lot of the formal decision um, kind of um, tasks uh, can be resolved um, and I'm it, it definitely has like a very clear aesthetics that's kind of becomes very recognizable and I'm interesting what form it will take like for example if you look at kind of post-internet art or kind of that was happening in the last decades, you can actually recognize a certain kind of kind of formal sheen to it. AI definitely has it as well. Um. Thank you. If there are no more questions, um, I would like um, to thank you, Anton, um, for having you here. Um, for spending um, analog time with us um, for processing um, at technical university, um, exploring and experiencing um, artistic research here with our colleagues um, from the different institutes, um, but also within the Dresden art scene, of course. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing your films um, in five minutes. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for, ha for having me here. I feel very welcomed and inspired to uh, collaborate and to be in Dresden. Thank you. Thank you.